Hey, everybody. Welcome. We're Mike and Jennifer. And uh, let me just tell you right off the top of the show, I've got a cold. In case you're wondering why I sound froggy. Bring it. Bring it. And I hope next week I don't have your cold. I hope you don't share it. I don't intend to share it, but you know the way colds are. So uh, anyway, that's uh, that's the hope here is that uh, <laughs> there is no cold. But uh, for Jennifer, uh, but uh, what can I say? Uh, I certainly have one, and uh, we don't know how long that's all going to be there. Boy, lots of you on, and it's a delight to see so many of you. Uh, it is um, seven o'clock Eastern time, six o'clock Central time, and that means it's dark out. We had hoped to, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago we were live on the beach, and we had loved to have done that again. And uh, lo and behold, we we're unable to do that, but. Uh, I have to go to the first question. That we'll I, get to the first uh, question. Oh, gee. Yeah. So here we go. Uh, that's what the beach looks like. Yeah, we I went out just before dark, and uh, there it was, and it was uh, it was great. So uh, that's uh, that's the beach, and I wish we were there <laughs> to show you, but it's pitch black out there. That's the one thing about daylight savings time. All right, Jennifer wants to do the very first question, and uh, it comes from uh, Davis. Tandy and Buster, and did Jennifer ever get her chair back from the Russos? Well, you better explain the backstory. on that. Okay, when we took the Wonder and we swapped it out and we bought the uh, Unity FX, my chair didn't fit in. So I couldn't bring it back and I didn't want to throw it in the trash can, so I just left it in the Wonder so that whoever uses the Wonder gets that chair. Yep. And the Russos only had it, the Wonder for a couple of weeks, so whoever's got the Wonder. I think they. I think they left it. Uh, I think they. Uh, they told us they left it in the in the wonder. And the wonder right. uh, leisure travel van kind of used that was like a review unit for various uh, uh, RV writers and and uh, bloggers to test it out with. And so uh, there was anyway, room for it. So whoever yeah, had, gets that unit, we used that big bike garage for the chair, and it was it was pretty neat. Boy, lots of you giving us great questions right off the top. We love to say hi to everybody, but. Uh, uh, it's always a, a, a balance between acknowledging everybody who says hi and then trying to get to the questions. So I love seeing these questions right off the front. Do you have any tips for personal safety when boondocking in remote areas, for example, security systems or personal location beacons? Um, sure we do. And I just, we posted on the blog, on the RVLifestyle.com blog today, a long list of, of, um, of precautions that all RVers need to take. And uh, let me just say off the bat that the context for this and, uh, is the tragic story of a couple from um, New Hampshire who were in a travel trailer and they were doing a cross the country trip and they were at Corpus Christi, Texas. And you know, down there near Padre Island, you can sleep on the beach and they were doing that. They disappeared. Nobody knew what happened. They were supposed to be making their way back east. Um, Surveillance shots at the border, the Mexican border nearby, showed someone, not them, driving their truck and their travel trailer into Mexico. Then uh, a few days later, uh, bodies were discovered near where they were last seen, uh, buried in the sand. Uh, autopsies were done, and uh, they were identified as that couple. So that's why a lot of our viewers are talking about personal safety. And a lot of us who like to boondock saw that story and we are following it with intense interest. Now, the sad part of journalism today, as I'm talking to you as a journalist, is that newspapers and television stations uh, have cut way, way back on the number of reporters they have. And so uh, in most places, there just aren't journalists pursuing the questions that we as RVers all have. Police are not uh, releasing much information, but a journalist digging into that story could have found out a lot of information if they just got out there and asked around. They're not doing that. We're not getting any real information. And so there's a lot of rumors out, and uh, I'm not going to go into all the rumors, but obviously something horrible happened and people are very concerned about safety. So with that in mind, your question about advice for personal safety. Oh, it just makes you angry that... It's something like that, that nobody investi investigates. Well, the no police, we assume spent. the police are investigating, but it makes me angry as a reporter that so much is focused on the political situation and arguing back and forth and stories like that, which impact, I would argue, you know, all RVers who are out there boondocking, we're talking millions there, 
We'd like to know what happened and what we can learn from it. Now, I'm not going to talk about guns. Um, if I were to say that I carried a, a weapon, a firearm in our RV, I'm not saying I do. I'm not saying I don't. But I would tell you this, if I did, I would not tell you. I would not publicly advertise, come and get it, you know, that's just immature. So uh, it's up to you on a personal decision on a firearm. Um, all I would say is you don't carry a firearm unless you are absolutely certain how to use it and you train regularly with it. Otherwise, it's ridiculous. There are reports I've seen in our Facebook group from friends of these campers that they did indeed carry a firearm for their protection. So if that's true, and I don't know it is, because again, there's no journalism digging into this story. Um, if I if we knew that story, um, it would it would help us. But it just shows can't imagine you. sleeping on the beach with a can of mace or a gun yeah. or a knife. I yep. just can't imagine because you, you know, think you were safe. So there, I guess you need a dog. You need a dog, uh, and that's one of the things we say. Now we got Bo, and Bo barks. Bo is a barker. You've all he heard, barks at crickets. You've, you've all heard Bo <laughs> bark. Bo, look, what is it? <laughs> he's down there he's waiting to go for his walk he'll start barking he always does in the show that's a big help my f only advice is go with your gut if an area looks dicey to you if you don't like the people who camp next to you um leave but leave just pick up and leave um uh, you know and be aware lock your doors when you're asleep at night lock them so nobody can open them up uh, don't open that door in the middle of the night for anybody unless they have a badge and, and you are sure that that's a law enforcement officer. Um, you know, think about think about what you would do if uh, if somebody challenged you or came to steal from you or rob. Uh, be prepared to leave. It's a little harder boondocking when you're in a trailer because usually most of you unhook the tow vehicle from the, the trailer or unhook, the, you know, the, the truck or whatever you're towing it with. So you can't leave as readily as you can in a camper van or in a motorhome. But um, my best thing, it, thing to you is um, know your surroundings. It doesn't hurt to have somebody near you that's, you know, that's familiar with you. Make friends with your neighbors. If somebody comes in a boondocking spot and they camp, you know, real close to you, for real close, go over and meet them, introduce yourself, and make sure you're comfortable. Jen, anything besides that that you'd say? I just hope that whoever did that is found because I don't want people to be able to get away with that yeah it's just not right i i think we are uh all right a question from ec corzilius do you think the ducted air conditioning is quiet yes i do don't you mm -hmm. we have it in our uh in our van in our rv and it is very quiet uh i wouldn't say it's quiet because it does make noise they all do uh well a couple of them we've heard are really quiet but this one it, it's a dometic it's ducted. It's not nearly as noisy as the other ones. Now, our van is a little bigger, and we have a couple, th we have several air vents for the air conditioning. So, And I always out. run a small portable fan. We do that uh, just to break the noise so Bo doesn't hear stuff in the middle of the day and bark too much. Now, he would if it was somebody coming into our unit, he'd bark, but Bo barks maybe, at a passing not. deer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people, no problem. But if there's a he chipmunk climbing on the picnic table. A dog is walking by. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, it is quieter. It's 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 nice. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we, it's funny. Last week we camped uh, and we ran, we had to run the air conditioner all night. And this week we camped a couple of, no, we were just back from um, uh, Albany, Georgia, where we camped. And um, we had to run the heater. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> you call it crazy weather. Friday. The, at 11 o'clock in the morning, down here, we're on the Emerald Coast in Florida, in uh, Okaloosa Island. It was 81 degrees at 11 a.m. By 8 a.m. the next morning, it was 36 degrees. Is that kinda crazy? Like, kind of like Michigan. Kind of like Michigan. Now, today, it was in the 70s. Just absolutely stunningly beautiful for you. Just coming, look at the sunset. This is the beach. I went out in front right, uh, right about, why didn't that? Oh, I'm sorry. Right out about... Uh, um, Right out about sunset, just before six o'clock or seven o'clock your time, about ten to ten minutes before we went on the air, that was the sunset. Isn't that gorgeous? And uh, it's it's just a great time to be down in the in the uh, on the Emerald Coast because most of the tourists are gone and the beaches are empty and the water's still warm enough to swim. And it's the it's, water was very turquoise today. Yeah, it was pretty. It was beautiful. Uh, have the twenty twenty Unities come out yet? What island bed, with island bed, we can't find one. I don't think they are out yet. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I've not seen them. I've not seen them at 
the RV shows. We just came back from the California RV show and they were not showing 2020s there. I know they're taking orders from them. In fact, I'd say they are not out. I think they're in production, some of them. Uh, we probably will see them. The next chance would maybe see them is at the uh, RV oh, okay. Super Show in Tampa, Florida, which is the third week of, uh, of, of January. And we'll be down there for that one. But I have not seen the 2020s. And they're very hard to get. They're very hard to get. It takes about a year to build one. And we're finding that with many of the RV companies. So I don't know if you saw my video this week. We did, did a video on uh, the, right. the Rev Group, which makes uh, their Class Bs are Midwest Automotive, um, what else? Uh, Midwest Automotive, uh, American Patriot, uh, Fleetwood, IROC. Uh, all but the Fleetwood are on the Sprinter chassis. They have a lot of Sprinters for Class Bs. Most of the pure Class B makers can't get enough Sprinter chassis because uh, Amazon buys them up. Uh, Rev made a group to made a commitment to get them at whatever cost they had to pay. So they scoured the country, and if Winnebago had one that wasn't in production, they'd buy just the chassis. Pay a premium, what they say? Sometimes a lot more. Ten thousand. Sometimes ten thousand more, but that way they they had sixty four of them that they were building. The ones on the class B plus or class C as as our Unity is, those are are on the Sprinter cutaway version. They're not the Sprinter van. They're a cutaway, which is just the the you know the cockpit, the driver's part, and then a a, a kind of a rail, a cutaway rail behind, and then they build a motorhome in a box and both that out they're getting those because so, amazon doesn't buy those so uh, the class b plus and c makers who build on sprinter are not having any real problems uh, getting them so there you go <coughs> excuse my cough and jennifer sneezing. sneezing i'm gonna sue you See? my lawyer is gonna be in touch your lawyer yeah boy we have had colds ongoing maybe it's because we're in different climates we have not we've traveled you know, I just bought this unit in, I think, April is when we took possession. And uh, at the end of October, we had turned 20,000 miles. So we have just been everywhere in our unit. And I think going from climate to climate, um, anyway. Whatever. We sound miserable. I'm sorry. Has anyone used faithful parking? I tried to book something at the end of December, but the booking site wouldn't take the reservation. Deb, I'm not familiar with faithful parking have to look that I'll up. I'll have to look it up. I will make a note of it right here. Faithful parking. Maybe I will check somebody it. out there has used it. Yeah, I'm not familiar with it. And maybe somebody will make a comment here in the questions and, and we can see from there. Larry says, uh, hey, Mike and Jen, um, we got back Thursday from a two month West Coast road trip. Had a great time seeing 10 national parks. Wow. Awesome. Hi to Edward in southern bergen county uh battling colder but nothing like michigan i don't think michigan's that bad what is the temperature there now it's 41 degrees up in michigan and um, alexa what's the temperature right now it's 54 degrees fahrenheit and down here Tonight, it's 54 expect degrees a low of 50 degrees okay okay thank yeah. you <laughs> thank you so that's the temperatures down here it's 54 that's that's great and the high today was it says 67 but i know it got up over that that's perfect weather for me. Really enjoy that. All right, looking through. Lots of you saying hi, and we really do appreciate that. Uh, what do you do when you live in the Midwest and you want to use your Class B, but the weather's cold? How do you handle winterizing and when to do it? Can we get that question probably three times every week on this on this broadcast alone? And we to that end, we have a whole playlist available right here on the YouTube channel on how to winterize your RV. So I urge you to go to that. Maybe Chris uh, or Phyllis, somebody will put it in the comments, those running comments. They'll put a link to that playlist on winterizing it. But you use it. The only thing you can't use... Water. Is, is you don't water. have fresh running water. Yeah. So you have to be sparing with your dishes. Some so people you, use 50% white vinegar, 50% water to squirt down their dishes that they use. And then, of course, flushing the toilet, you have to use antifreeze. Yeah, uh, so it's uh, it's it's uh, real simple. You just and you think that sounds really hard, uh, but it's not. You just carry a jug of antifreeze uh, and put that in your bathroom in your RV, and you whatever you it's always delicate. Whatever you deposit in it, you put an equal amount of antifreeze, in, and then you flush it, and you can then drain your antifreeze and just like normal. Um, and as for using water, bring bottled water to drink. 
It's a little hard to do extended cold weather camping in most of the RVs, but it's uh, certainly possible. We do our winter camp out coming up in just a few weeks. And let's see, I have a link to it here someplace. If you want more information, on it, that's the date. And uh, I thought I had, uh, no, uh, that's the date for it. It's January 9th through the 12th in at Taquamanon Falls in Michigan. And if you're interested in that, uh, go to our RV Lifestyle Facebook group and you can find out some information there. Do a search and you'll find some stuff. So, it always makes me really sad when we winterize the RV. Yeah, now we haven't winterized ours, but we're heading back towards Michigan in a couple of weeks. And uh, I'm going to um, winterize it here uh, real quick, just a little spritzing of antifreeze through the plumbing system. And then the uh, first place I'm taking as we get back into Michigan is my dealer, which is Holland Motorhomes in Holland, Michigan. And I'll just drive straight there and have them do a complete winterization. It's tough to do, but um, I mean, it's not hard to do it. It's psychologically, it's tough to do. It means you're going to be in cold weather for a couple of months, which we will be. We'll be through Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, then our winter camp out. But then we're turning right around from the winter camp out and driving down to Southern Florida for the Tampa RV show. And we will unwinterize it there. We typically stop at our friends at Sunshine State RVs in Gainesville on the way down and uh, Nick and his crew there uh, will dewinterize it, and it'll be a very short winterization. But Ken, don't be afraid to camp in the winter time. It's uh, it's simple to do. We like winter camping. We do. Yeah. Um, have you had the seats on your Mercedes fixed and the bolts on your levelers cut off? Why would I do that? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the seats on my Mercedes. And the bolts on my levelers don't need to be cut off. So I don't know, Paul, why you would ask me that. Uh, there's no problem with them. None. <laughs> so, uh, and I love my levelers. Uh, and the seats, we, who, who were we just showing that to? You had some people sitting there. Oh, Doug and, uh, and Glenda. So we had mm -hmm. some friends visit us, RVing friends from Texas. Texas. And we had them come in and they noticed how comfortable those seats are. Mm -hmm. uh, they really are comfortable seats. Uh, uh, what do you think of the new Airstream travel van they have built? Quality of leisure aren't it. Aren't they? Well, they might not. Please, what do you think of the new Airstream travel van they have? The build quality of leisure aren't it. Well, I'm not sure what that means. Well, they you? want a, the quality of the Airstream versus the quality of leisure. I think they're comparing oh, the two. Okay. If that, Yeah, I mean, I can't. I've never driven an Airstream. I've certainly gone through and we've done videos on the Interstate and on the Atlas, their big B plus, which is extremely expensive. Um, I can't speak to the quality. I hear reports, uh, kind of what I think you're implying there, Jan, but I can't verify that. They're beautiful units. Um, we are very pleased with the quality of the van we have. We've had no problems with it, none. and. Um, the only problem we had is my driving over a, a uh, kind of a curb the other day so I was leaving the parking lot and uh, I have the snap pads I'm doing a video you'll see those in a couple of weeks I have these snap pads on the levelers it's kind of like a little plastic block that the levelers fit in and kind of spreads out the waste and you, or the, the weight and you don't get dirt and grime caught up in the little metal part of the leveler snap pads called anyway I knocked one of those off that's the only problem and I put it right back on the same day and uh, it's kind of fun so uh, so I, I can't tell you talk to you of the build quality um, no hum tonight well that's good that's very good yep uh, central Kansas do you guys to prefer to use a CB or not to use one well Jared I have uh, talked about this a lot uh, about my interest in installing a CB in our RV we've not done it yet I need to find the right place to install it. I need to have the time to actually have three or four hours devoted to having them put it in. Uh, I think I've spoken about how I think it would be very useful. I'm a ham radio operator and uh, I love my ham radio, always have been. I've been a ham radio operator, amateur operator for uh, since Forever. I was a teenager. So uh, I love that, always will, but uh, it's just not very useful uh, in traveling in the RV. If I was traveling alone, I'd have so many radios in there, it would be great. But I travel with my lifelong traveling companion and my bride, and she doesn't particularly 
appreciate all that noise. <laughs> um, the CB radio would be really good when you're caught in a traffic jam or you need to get around a situation that maybe Waze doesn't show. I don't know how many of you use the Waze app, but um, since we have CarPlay in our vehicle, uh, that has become my, my primary navigation system. Uh, Waze is just an awesome, it's an awesome, uh, let's see if I can pull it up. <coughs> it's just an awesome uh, navigation system. It allows you to crowdsource traffic conditions and you hear where there's jams and all that sort of stuff and you can also report them and it's been extremely accurate and, and great. Um, but I still would like to have a CB. I just haven't put one in yet and I'll let you know if I do and what I think about it. But and we were thinking about Indiana, weren't we, on the way home if we were going to put one in? But I'm sure we'll be out of time and won't be able to. Yeah, yeah, you know we're going to be rushing back as fast as we happen. Uh, because of Thanksgiving. Uh, Mitch says what happened in Texas also happened in Alberta a few years ago. Uh, Safety is a big thing on the road. Yeah, mm -hmm. Alberta, Canada. That's unusual. There was a oh, a couple of months ago. There was, uh, was that Alberta, where we had, uh, there were some guys in a camper that were, were killed as well yeah. on the Yukon Highway. That yeah. wasn't a couple of years ago, that was just a couple of months ago. So that's, Maybe thanks for reminding us of that. Maybe a couple of years ago too. Maybe a couple of years ago, but this was just a month or two ago that that happened. And it was a couple of wackos who ended up murdering a bunch of people. Uh, but uh, yeah, two of them were in a camper of some sort. And that way, I think it was Alberta. No, wasn't it the Yukon territory? Up that way someplace. Uh, gone for a few weeks in Ohio for the birth of our grandson. Glad to be back, says Andrew. Thank you. Congratulations. Ray Jones uh, from Indianapolis. It's chilly here. We got the RV winterized, but plan on hitting the road. Good for you, Ray. Pause in effect. Uh, somebody they just winterized theirs yesterday. Try to stay where you have cell service as well. Yeah. Yes, that's a very good tip. That's one thing I do like about my ham radio. I do carry two ham radio handy talkies. And uh, often when we stop, I'll look up and find out where the nearest repeater system is. And I'll see if I can hit that with that. And that's a great backup communication. And that is one thing I do have. I, do, I should say I do carry ham radio in my, in my car, but I just have little handy talkies. I have two of them. And... Um, you know they're they're good. If I go on a hike and leave Jennifer back, I can leave one on, and and she can at least hear me if I have an issue, and uh, that's always good. But cell service that's important. I mean, there's that phone for safety that you can have, but you know the problem is I think that you don't have all these things on you. You know, if something if a situation happens, you don't have all your little safety devices with you. Yeah. Um, what GPS unit do you recommend for seniors? Um, you know, I'm not pro pro I'm not a fan of any GPS system, the commercial ones, but of them, Garmin is generally pretty good, and Magellan is is pretty good. As I said a minute ago, I tend to rely now on Apple CarPlay. There is a version of Andrew uh, or Android Play, I think, for uh, Android devices, but I run this through the um, through my. Uh, uh, entertainment console display screen on my uh, in my RV and we use Waze sometimes I'll use Google Maps if I'm if I want and those have been just awesome awesome so uh, I kind of stay away even Mercedes has this gorgeous display with their GPS system but I find that uh, Waze is much more up-to-date and it notices events that are on the road like hazards on the road I'll hear of that all the time so I love Waze W-A-Z-E don't you yeah yeah the other thing is if we're listening to a podcast or something and it says, caution, object on road, ahead. And, and then it takes a couple seconds to get back to the podcast and I miss whatever they're saying, but uh, that's a small, small thing. Um, um, all right, a couple of other questions. Uh, after two years in Texas at Fort Worth, I was starting thinking that I definitely need a gun and then I moved back, and then I moved back to Europe. Well. Okay, have, you don't need one in Europe, right? Have you ever considered adding an automatic generator starter linked to the thermostat to address the bow air conditioning issue? LTV is offering it as an option with the 2K inverter. Hmm. Um, no, I, I haven't, and uh, I think we have it on, actually. In fact, I know we do. I'm, I'm sure we do. 
Uh, but instead, I rely on another thing that's turned off now called RV Pet Finder. And I find that is, uh, if I'm gone uh, out hiking, if we're out hiking, or if we're out for dinner, or Bo, like we're at a football game, and we leave Bo in the RV uh, for the, the well, the football game's on, I can monitor the temperature with this, this app, and the app will send me a text alert if it gets above or below a certain point I've set. So that's really what I rely on because I'm never that far that I can't get there to turn on the air conditioning or, or turn it off if that better. So uh, I find that a, a thing, but I think, uh, I, 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 that shows you how little I've, I've needed to use it. So I, I think we have that on my, uh, on my Unity. I just have never needed to really look at do it. Do we say something negative about our experience last weekend getting a pet sitter for Bo, or do we just let that go? Yeah, I think we should. Um, we uh, made arrangements, which I say the name of the company. Yep, yep. We made arrangements through Rover for a pet sitter for Bo. And uh, normally we take him, but we had some other things that we needed to tend to. And so we decided that we wouldn't take Bo. And we were not real sure. I mean, we were a little uncomfortable with who we were leaving him with. Or, you know, we just didn't know. But... Um, Anyway, we got Bo back, and uh, he's limping. His front leg, his front right paw, he's limping. So I have no idea what they did to him. Well, it was we felt, you know, we didn't follow our own advice, and that uh, is go with your instinct, go with your gut. Uh, you know, it's so funny because you can get so guilt tripped out. On, Over your am pet. I looking down on these people because uh, they're poor, or you know, in a, they're not living in the best neighborhood, but they're trying to make some income? Um, so I was like, oh, I'm being prejudiced here. So we went with it, and it was a bad mistake. Bo came back with diarrhea, the ugly stuff. But, I mean, you, you who have dogs know what it's like. They had, uh, it was like a little townhouse, and they had just a patio outside, like a cement slab. And they were watching a couple other dogs, and there was feces on the patio, and that's where they had the dogs go. Well, my dog doesn't do that. He would not ever think about pooping on a patio. <laughs> Uh, he has to go on, on grass, and so I told him that. And uh, as soon as he got home, he he went on grass, and uh, he would. It was not a good experience. I got a cough. <coughs> so anyway, you've got to go with your instincts. Go with your instincts, <coughs> and we didn't. <coughs> now we have recommended we recommended um, Rover many times before, and we still will use Rover. That's the first bad experience we've had, and. Uh, I offer that up to all of you who follow our advice and just remember that um, you got to use your gut. We had one rover sitter that Bo liked it there so much in Perry, Georgia. He didn't want to come home. Yeah. <laughs> he was having such a good time. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Why are there only 20 links, likes on this stream with 200 watching? I don't 260 know. 260 watching, according to my calculator. I don't know. Maybe ah. they don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> if people liked it, they would like it. But... You know, I think, I don't want to be, I think a lot of our people just aren't real familiar with how likes and thumbs up and why it's important to subscribe to the YouTube because we're a different demographic than most of the YouTube channels. There we go. I'm getting some thumbs up. I see them. But, um, you know, we're, we've been struggling. We had a goal. I had a dream. We wanted to hit 100,000 by the end of the year. And it's just stalled over the last month as people stop traveling and we're getting the same amount of views and views are increasing, but I need people to subscribe. So please do that. But likes and thumbs up are important. And uh, thank you for suggesting that. The uh, The other explanation is that, and I don't want to admit that that's the explanation is that people really don't like it, but I hope they do. <laughs> uh, so thanks for, for asking that. I, I think, I think, um, let's see. Uh, I'm looking for some questions here. Lots of you saying hi. Um, let me, I'm, it's hard sometimes to do it. Okay, Deb Castle talks about faithful parking. I do know about that. That is a, a, a company that's just trying to get organized where they organize churches around the country to allow RVers to park overnight there for a few days. It's just starting off. I haven't done a promotion on it. I thought actually of reaching out to them and doing a podcast interview with them, but until they get more churches signed up, and more of a track record. I, I, I don't want to give a lot of publicity to it because I don't know, you know, a lot of people have great dreams and they don't, they don't work. I'm hoping this does. And if, it, if we see that they get the traction, we'll, we'll bring them on the podcast. But I do know about that. Thank you, Deb, for, for reminding about that. 
Well, here's another question. How did you get so many subscribers? Where are the viewers in the chat? Are they all lurking? Uh, <laughs> well, all my subscribers are real subscribers. Um, I learned really quick on that uh, some of our, uh, some of the other channels out there, you, you can buy subscribers. You can actually buy them. And they're fake subscribers. There's these companies that, that, uh, just set up millions of accounts and then they subscribe with them and they just do it over it. Well, YouTube is smart, you know, they invented all this stuff. So they penalize those channels and every one of our cha our subscribers are real people. In fact, um, Google just went through a phase about a week ago where they went through and they removed all fake subscribers and all um, inactive accounts from many of the channels and it didn't affect us at all because we've been really careful to have real subscribers and it's taken us years to get here you know we're up a, a little over 92,000 now and it's exciting I monitor it I write it down every day I get up in the morning and I want to see if we've got how many subscribers we pick and we had been growing by over a hundred a day and that slowed a little bit as everybody stopped RVing so wait till Christmas comes I know I'm worried sick about Thanksgiving it. holidays so, so my point of all this if you have not yet subscribed please hit that subscribe button and uh, and do so uh, and Ray Jones says, uh, don't forget to click the thumbs up icon to show your love for what they do to us, <laughs> for us. Now, we don't do it to you, we do it for you. Thanks, Ray. Uh, let's go see what, what else we have for questions. Would you recommend a Murphy bed in an RV? Just wondering how you feel about the one you have in your RV. It's a regular mattress. I'm going to get some water while you answer right that. Right here, right so, here. Here, I got one right here. Okay. It's okay. a regular mattress and uh, we like it. So I would recommend a Murphy bed if that's what you, you know, if you, if that's what you think you would like. And you can make it up with sheets, mattress, pad, blanket, or you could use the sleeping bags. Yeah. And, and what we, what but we now with the Murphy bed, when you have to fit it into the wall, you, I mean, like I got an Ugg blanket, the first blanket I got, cause I, I thought it was so fuzzy and so warm and I fell in love with it, but it was too thick. Okay. I'm going to do something. I just saw this tricks <laughs> says, can I have a shout out? Hello! <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. It must be your first time here. We're glad you're here. So you get a shout out. Thank you. And uh, it's always fun. Um, hey, Mike and Jen from Columbia, South Carolina. I think it was Manitoba, uh, Canada. What is the name of California. the backup camera you recently installed and where did you buy it? Um, it's on the blog or it's on the YouTube channel. I did a video on it and showed its install. If you look on the uh, on the YouTube channel, do a search under backup cameras and you should find it here. It was a very inexpensive one. I think it was about two hundred dollars. Two hundred bucks. I bought it at a car stereo shop. If you go to almost any car stereo shop, they sell them. Uh, mine. Is, my only criticism is that seven twenty resolution, and I would like to have ten eighty, but it was inexpensive and it works great and I just like to have it, it I use it we use it as a rear view mirror it's always on pointing in the back except, except at night, at night. <laughs> at night the light glare is, is too much so I turn it off at night uh, but I got that so somebody else would uh, would drive the RV along with I also installed the um, um, blind spot detectors I also installed that so somebody else would have no excuse not to drive it in and it's working so she's uh, willingly uh, behind the wheel now so I'm glad to hear that uh, do you have a certain RV you would recommend um, there's so many of them I can't begin to, to recommend just one um, but if you you know it, it depends on your needs right it depends. it depends on your needs whether you want small or if you want something a little bit larger I would never want a class A because they're just too big to me, but, but that doesn't uh, mean that they're not right for somebody else. So, you know, when we recommend one, we'd probably recommend uh, a B plus, a C, a class B, the traditional camper van. Um, we put prop would also recommend a towable of even yeah. a fifth wheel, you know, fifth wheels are pretty big. Um, a small towable trailer, I could see us in that someday as well. But yeah, it depends on how many kids you've got. You know, if you're traveling with a family, if you're living in it full time. I mean, all what you want. Now, would I recommend a brand? Um, yes, I would. I'd give you several brands that I think uh, make really quality uh, RVs. But um, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to unduly influence anybody in that decision, except to suggest that maybe you look at some of our 
RV show videos because we do product tours of almost every brand. We've done a whole bunch of B's. We've done C's. Um, we we don't haven't done travel trailers or fifth wheels, but you can find class B's and class C's in our videos. And um, if you guys want us to do those, let us know. We'll start. You know, I don't know if we can do everything when we go to these shows, but maybe we should start doing some travel trailer reviews. If you want that, tell me and we'll do them. But then I got to recommend a truck. <laughs> I always want a truck. Oh, you've had really. a truck. I know, but I like trucks. Uh, so um, obviously, the, you know, I, I have to recommend the one we have because we're happy with that. And that's from Leisure Travel Van. They're a Canadian manufacturer. I have to say good things about their competitors, um, Pleasure Way, which makes a really good, uh, they're just, uh, man, no, Pleasure Way is in Saskatchewan, and um, uh, Lisa Travel Van is in Winkler, Manitoba, so they're not too far apart. They're small companies, small family companies, businesses. Family businesses, that's one thing I'd always recommend, go with a family-run business. We recommend and like, um, the Coach House brand or Coach Man brand. The Coach House is another brand, uh, but we recommend like the Coachman brand of Class Bs. They're having troubles getting a hold of Sprinters right now for their larger one, but they have uh, a Ford Transit model that's really nice called the Beyond, and uh, that's highly recommended. Uh, we like um, the Rev Group. We were impressed with American Coach, some of the models there, and Midwest Automotive that they have. Um, but you know, go check your your uh, the, the videos we've done. Go to an RV show if you can, and sit in um, as many as you can. Learn about the company. First thing is look for a small uh, family owned if you can. The big corporate sites ones uh, they make good RVs too. I'm not blasting them all, but I'm just saying in general a small family owned one. That's the family name behind the business. Uh, Tiffin is another good company that we recommend. They make a incredible class A's and they make a class C called the Wayfair, which is a nice one as well. So I'm all over the place there, but you can do it. Uh, what do you do with your recyclables and food scraps? Thanks. Well, we throw out the food scraps in, in containers and uh, we look for recyclable places. And if they have them, we throw them out there. I got in big trouble at our sticks and bricks house. The uh, food scraps, I started feeding the raccoon and then we no. had about 50 raccoons. We did. One night we came out and there were like 50 raccoons, a couple of <laughs> possums, and a skunk. And they were, it was like, it was like, so it was like a Disney movie <laughs> where you were feeding them. Yeah. Yeah, I had to quit feeding them. Uh, so I we, mean, in parks and things, you can't, you can't feed, you can't throw that stuff out there. We're not giving it to Bo. Now so we don't I try to make just enough food. We see very, one of the sad things about most of the campgrounds is few of Ugh. them have recyclable areas. We did see them and we're proud to see them at uh, the uh, the big state park in New York. What's the one that we did there? Um, why can't I think of the name of it? You know, the, the Grand Canyon P yes. Park in New York, the big waterfall. My brain's in another spot thinking about somebody gave a watermelon. They had a watermelon and they gave it, they left it for it and gave it to a bear. And then that poor bear got put down. Yeah, because he got used. He got used, he got used, to, used to eating, eating yeah. people food. Yeah. So you have to be careful. Lester writes us, uh, we just got our first RV, a 2019 CrossFit. Just, well, the CrossFit is now known as the Beyond. And you two are to blame. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's a nice unit. I'm glad I said good things about it just now. Any issues with low bridges and non-RV centric GPS apps? I was in New York and oh my God, the bridges are low. Is that common? <laughs> Uh, we've not, we've been, we try to we've stay never out of, been in New York try to City. Stay out of New York City. Uh, you, you know, you gotta, you'd have to shoot me and tie me up and drag me there to get me to New York City anytime. But, um, and that, I've been there many times and we, I, I like New York. I'm just telling you, I don't want to drive my RV there. Uh, and, uh, we never really had any problem anywhere in the country. East Coast has the most low bridges. And you uh, got to find another way. And uh, in terms of non-RV centric GPS apps, uh, uh, I just use Waze, as I said, Waze, and sometimes Google Maps, and uh, and it works great. I sometimes will use the Mercedes 2019 Nav app just because I love to look at the display. It's so be beautiful. But Waze and Google are the best. And uh, enjoy that uh, Beyond, as it's now known. Uh, they had, they called it CrossFit, and somebody owns the copyright to that name and they threatened to sue him or, or they did sue him. I don't know. So they had to change it. Uh, so that's, that's good. Hey, look at um, all the thumbs up we got. 
maybe if we say something, we'll get more. Yeah, keep giving those thumbs up and please subscribe. <laughs> I want to get over a hundred thousand by the end of the year. I'll feel that we've succeeded this year. Uh, I have an American ham radio license. I met a lot of friends. Um, many years ago? Many years ago because people would wake up hearing my English accent on the local repeaters. I bet they did, Jeff. Uh, good for you. It's a lot of fun that the, actually I should point out that there's a big effort, you know, in California, ham radio operators uh, have this incredible repeater system uh, as they do in other Western states on all the mountaintops. You can talk from on a handy talkie from one end of the state to the next. They're on fire towers and all that. Well, the state of California has said that ham radio is not important anymore and they got to either pay them a humendous fee or take those repeaters down. Isn't that terrible? It is just, it's another example of why we stay out of California. <laughs> I mean, I go to the RV show, but why would California do that? It's just, it's just it is absolutely it's an crazy. insane state. And, I, and I'm just saying what everybody tells us as we go out there. Did we have anybody say they liked living in California well, when we're out obviously there? Obviously, a lot of people like living there. The I think if you can get away from the populated. cities. Right? But, but anyway, that's just absolutely the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, you want ham radio. If everything goes down, it's the way everybody can communicate. Well, maybe that's other. what they don't. They don't want anybody communicating, you know, if they don't control it. But ham it. radio. Yeah. This is crazy. The, the whole state is insane. Traveled to Smoky Mountains this past week, had an issue with 2015 Mercedes Sprinter going up a mountain, went Ooh. into limp home. Oh, moment. we know that one. Check engine light came on, code said throttle accelerator closed, heard of anybody with problems. Yeah. Uh, well, you have a 2015, we had a 2006, and uh, we went into limp home mode going it up. It wasn't the fault. Of the vehicle uh, going up one of the mountains going down one of the mountains actually in the bat the black hills of uh, south dakota and the problem was me uh somebody said well make sure you downshift you know to slow the engine down when you're going down and i was having a ball downshifting well i downshifted at way too much of an rpm and i bop popped uh, some i don't know thermal thing i don't know what our it was. first trip Fifteen hundred dollars it cost me, and we limped all the way up to Billings, Montana. I know Montana. it's scary in the mountains. Yeah, very scary. And then I think one of the other Class B sprinters we had it going happened into what, Pennsylvania once. Oh yeah, going into Pennsylvania. It was a different unit. Going to the Hershey RV show, and we had to have them come and pick it up and tow it in to fix it, and they fixed that under warranty. And once when I was driving from so, Kentucky, Tennessee, in the mountains, all of a sudden there's there's no acceleration. So I have heard of that. And yes, it's we have heard. On, uh, I haven't heard about it on anything from like 2017 on up, uh, but uh, it does happen. And, uh, and it's scary. Usually it's covered under warranty, except for us. How about us. going down to Florida once? We were driving and we've got the limp home. That was last year, yeah. Yeah, that was, I mean, it is so frightening when that happens. Yeah. Um, I don't remember what the cause of that was. but And it usually was, there's a code number that comes up and you can go to your book owner's manual and figure out what it is and we the first time we got on our with everybody and everybody told us what was wrong hey our friend ray jones says hot tea with honey and lemon to help <laughs> with that cough cold ray i'm going to do that i just that. bought some tea i'm going to do that in a little bit here are we taking bo out to the dog park tonight if he has his way can you walk around the neighborhood uh i'd rather take him to the dog hunt and just kind of sit like there out. Uh, then we have to yell at him for Getting into stuff. Uh, uh, Phyllis, thank you, Phyllis, for being here again with uh, Chris as well. Phyllis and Chris are helping to moderate and help uh, find resources as we throw them out here. Uh, she says the thumbs up uh, that we're talking about is under the video. And if you're watching on mobile, you have to close the chat to uh, see that icon. So, yeah, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. That's really what we would love to see you do. Uh, uh, what else do we have here? Lots of you talking about that. And Phyllis gave some information there. Uh, let me jump ahead and see if I can find some uh, some questions. Um, <laughs> Definitely a real person. Yeah. Uh, okay. They're all talking about the thumbs up thing. And Phyllis <laughs> just answered that. So. Thank you, Phyllis. And let's go way down the list here. Uh, all right, so Ray says, anybody who's shopping for an RV, take your time and uh, go try them on. Don't let anyone pressure you into buying when you're out looking. 
this is what we did and eventually there you go uh, she they eventually they had one custom built for us on a ProMaster 3500 long wheelbase and it's been with a high roof some people do that that's also a great great advice Ray uh, Lawrence is in um, in uh, San Diego when traveling how often do you wash clothes do you go to a coin laundry campground laundry do you have a travel wash machine some people have a little washing machine but it would take up space as it is i have a rough time keeping myself from filling up the shower with everything under the sun usually we'll go to a koa every now and then just so we can use the uh, washing machines we also travel uh it's in one of our tips, KOA tips takes videos. good care of their washers and dryers or sometimes a commercial you know laundromat you just Sometimes you're not happy with the machines. Most of you know that we prefer a boondock and, um, you know, because often when we're going someplace, we're overnighting and it's just so much more fun to boondock, get away from everything. So Mike just goes down to the creek with a little wash. <laughs> yeah. I've Send you, that. woman. That's a woman's work. <laughs> uh, we don't do that. We don't no, pollute the streams. <laughs> no, we don't. We're just kidding. Just joking. Uh, but we do, when we, when we, we will usually... At, you know, every fourth or fifth day, if we're on the road a lot, we'll stop at a commercial campground and generally we'll try and pick a KOA because we find they have a pretty universal standard of, of cleanliness and excellence and you know what you're getting into. They're a little pricey, you know, they're 40, 50 bucks a night sometimes and depending on what kind of a KOA it is, but uh, always um, friendly. We've, we've, we've had one bad experience in a KOA and that was during the peak summer season up by the Rocky Mountains and... Um, I'll, give, I'll, cut, I'll cut them some slack because they got us a spot to spend the night even though it was uh, very crowded. So we like KOA and uh, we'll stay there four or five every fourth or fifth night and we love to use the, the facilities and it's great. Our new RV, um, we're less likely to camp commercially because one of the big draws in the commercial campground was the hot shower. Well, our new RV has that thermo or uh, Truma instant hot water, and oh my gosh, how did we get along with that you before? You just turn it on, and you have hot water instantly. You're not wasting. You don't water waste any. You jump in, you're hot. Uh, if you turn it off, you know if you lather up, you're really boondocking. You want to save water use. You, you know, lather up. You turn it back on, it's instantly hot again. So it's really nice. And then having a complete dedicated dry shower is really nice, and uh, so we love that. But for laundry, it's usually commercial and. In one of our videos, we always travel with the roll of quarters, sometimes two, right? Yeah. What do they cost? What does it cost? Uh, Ten dollars for a roll of quarters. No, what does it cost? Uh, oh, for laundry? Yeah. Two fifty. You wow. know. Yeah, two bucks. Usually two fifty. How has a move to the B plus limited your mobility in urban areas or impacted parking? You know, it really hasn't that I can say at all. Um, I showed you, I did a picture on our Instagram page the other day. Uh, our friends visited us and they have a class B and uh, we're at our condo and I had them park right next to us in the condo and you can see both of us fit within the lines. Uh, we are wider, uh, about by that much wider than the class B, uh, but they both fit into, a, into the width of a standard parking spot. And uh, if you don't know Instagram, you can find it. I can send you a link to it. There's our, uh, that's how to follow us on Instagram. Just go to RV Lifestyle Mike. I often will put stuff. So I'm able to park. And like I did with our Class B, we had the extended length Class B. We're only a few inches longer than that. You can see the side by side. We're maybe that much longer than this traditional Class B. So that much wider, uh, that much wider maybe, and about that much uh, longer. So it's negligible. I, we always, even in the Class B XL, we would take, if we could, in a parking lot, we'd try and take two spots. So at the back of a parking lot. And I don't like fast food restaurants. I mean, there's no way you're going to go under, you know, yeah, the overhang yeah. thing. I don't want but to go to we, fast food anyway. But we've pulled in. Sometimes you want to get a salad and we can park in their parking lots. We just pull on the side. It does. It makes me a little nervous. No, it you doesn't know. mean. I it doesn't bother it. him at all. And yeah. he's driving, but I kind so of bite my fingernails. I can say it hasn't limited our ability, our, our mobility at all. Um, and, and while you're at it, would you do that? Would you follow us on Instagram? Uh, we've been using, I'm using, we're probably posting four or five times a day up there. Instagram has been really fun. I really don't know why I didn't use it before. It's really, really nice. Um, let's, uh, Chris points up a good point. If you're looking to buy an RV and learn the best practices, uh, here's a link right here at the, uh, 
RV uh, lifestyle.com RV buying secrets for uh, some information we have if you want to go to that link right there here I'll is Bob he's saying okay guys when you take me some yes he does does he have some kind of built-in he does he knows what time it is do you think he it's really, time do you think does. it's bow time uh, huh you're coming over to tell me um all right, let's uh, let's go to thank you, Chris, for putting that up, and that's in the in the uh, stuff. Uh, does anyone know if you buy a used RV, can you buy an extended warranty for it? Is that possible? It is, it is. Uh, I would urge you to go to rvlifestyle.com/ris. rvlifestyle.com/ris. That's for recreation insurance something or other. Ris. And uh, you can get a free um, estimate on insurance and extended warranties uh, right there. Or, no, I think that's just insurance. I'm sorry. Uh, extend. There is a warranty uh, company that we recommend. Yes. I can't remember Actually, it now. Know. You know, it, it, we've done a story on it. I had them on our podcast, but I can't remember. Look at our podcast and maybe Phyllis or Chris can put it up podcast episode where we talked about extended warranties and it's a service that uh, we recommended have heard nothing but good things about and they'll um, we'll put it up on the, in the comments if Chris or Phyllis can find it on extended warranties and some of them will do an extended warranty on a used RV depending on its age and uh, and you know lots of circumstances so you need an expert to, to talk to you about that but I can't remember the name of the podcast we've got we just this week will be 267 podcasts, so it's hard to remember what number they are. Uh, speaking of this week's podcast, uh, be sure and tune back, tune into it. It's about Boondockers Welcome, and uh, it's a great service for free camping overnight. And you want to take advantage of it because they're going to raise their prices really quick. And we'll put a link in on the podcast. We'll have an interview with the founder. And you'll be able to learn about this. It's a great service for uh, for people who want to travel around the country and stay someplace free. And uh, there's a lot of places. Uh, Anne says, I freeze the lasagna recipe that Jennifer posted a few years ago. It makes a quick, easy, and delicious meal. It's such a good vegetable. Yeah. Lasagna. Now he's keto, so uh, there's no more pasta. Can I share that I found? I'm gonna go get it. I gotta show yeah. you. Anybody else on keynote? Let me. I gotta show oh, you. This, this is awesome. This is awesome. Tell them about it. Ice cream, and I normally don't like ice cream, but um, unfortunately, this ice cream I like, and I'm not. I wanted to get a few pounds off, and the pounds aren't coming off, and I think this ice cream is not helping. This is the secret. Now I don't know if they have this around the country. I found it in Publix uh, supermarkets here in um in uh, florida it's expensive that it's ex was like six dollars and oh, twenty cents look at this can you see what that is there's not much in there look at that that's coffee chip ice cream and it's only six grams of carbs so it's it's keto friendly and it's called uh I think some kind of artificial sweetener in there rebel it R -E -B -L. no it's got uh, it some natural sugar. thing but no sugar added High fat, low carb, keto. No, it's just awesome, and it comes in a number of different. Uh, oh, a number! I think there's about a dozen. And I think we got a dozen them all. different flavors. And then there's another brand that we brought in called Carb Smart. Carb Smart, and you yeah. brought like fudge sickles that they mm -hmm. have. But anyway, mm -hmm. and I remember that. I'm wondering if I should have Jennifer do more recipes that she does. We that was fun. She, you did a good job with that cook. I know when you decided for a while you're going to give up keto and you were going to go vegan. I thought yes. I made my lasagna. Oh my gosh, that was good. I yeah. should make it and just freeze it for me. Just make a whole bunch of packages because I love that lasagna. Every time I serve it, people like it. Yeah, it was really fun. Uh, it was great. Uh, okay, here's the podcast episode uh, on extended warranties. Thank you so much. Uh, there you go. Um, I don't know what number it is, but the best number would be uh, whatever the number of that episode would be because that's a long thing for people to write down and remember. <laughs> it is really, I don't know, it's episode number such and such. And I always make a short link to the podcast at rvlifestyle.com slash whatever number it is. And I don't know what number that would be. Um, but that's an incredibly long URL that nobody is going to be able to remember or write down. Uh, but it's in the comments so you can see it. Uh, all right, I'm going to just do a couple more questions and then my voice is giving out as you can tell. I know there's been discussion before, but we want to use our new motorhome when 
we get to go to a ski resort in March. How do you protect the drain area and any other suggestions? Bill, scroll up because we answered that question at the top of the program tonight. We answer it two or three times every week. And we have a whole episode, uh, a whole playlist of how to winterize and take care of your RV right here on the YouTube channel. So, so check out. And I would think out. the owner's manual yeah, for uh, whatever vehicle you have yeah. because there are so many different ways to winterize. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and uh, last question, what was the worst RV you ever had? I can't say we ever had a bad one. Did we? Well, we had two prototypes. Yeah, we you had know, prototypes, so but you can't fault you that can't because fault we were there to the manufacturer test them out. because that's why we got to use them. And we found things that didn't work, and because it was a prototype, they didn't they didn't use, put those in production models. Or, but we we were the guinea pigs. We, we were the guinea pigs. So, uh, so they've all been good. We've had a great time with every one of them. You know, right? we've had good brands. Road Track. They were the first people to make the Class B. Yes. So you know, we were with them. For yes. seven years, and now we're with Leisure, and they're the, good. There's the park, Let's Wear State yes. Park. That's the one that yes, yes, I, yes. I applaud them for having uh, at all the campgrounds uh, recyclables. We don't see that in a lot of campgrounds. And I'm, there should be. I'm thinking we're going to see more and more of that around the country. I sure I sure hope so. Uh, so that's good. Whatever happened, happens. My brother made me crazy with keto diet Friday to my mother's house is crazy for it. <laughs> Okay. Oh, so you're, you're, what happens? You're, you're, my you're, brother made me crazy with keto diet. Yeah, because he's on the Friday. keto diet and he's driving everybody nuts with having to eat keto. To my mother. And house. you went to your mother's house and your brother was on the keto diet thing. I won't eat this, this, that, that. You know, when you go to your mother's house and you're on a keto diet, you need to take some of your own food so that you don't drive your mother and your siblings crazy. You understood that. Yes. See, that's why two are always better than one. Thank you, Jan. Yeah, that can be a mess, and you can be yeah, a little. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's oh. just because you're on keto doesn't mean everybody else is, nor should they have to be. Right. Yeah, yeah. Bring what you can eat. Bring some of your own food. And do what works with you. You know, keto is working with me. I also do something called intermittent fasting, which means you basically don't eat from about six or seven at night until noon the next day, and. Uh, uh, that really helps, uh, you know, get things kicked off and burning right. I have trouble with the keto because it's high fat. And I'm eating regularly how I eat. And then we have this high fat stuff in the house, yeah. which tempts me, like this ice cream. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's about time. I'm going to let this thing And then the first couple of nights more. with that, I couldn't sleep. So I don't know it's what kind chocolate. of... It's because of chocolate. Well, whatever they had in there, I couldn't sleep. All but right. I'm like the canary. All right, our hour is about up. My voice is about gone. And uh, here's hoping that Jennifer has a voice next uh, week whenever we come back to I'm you. I'm doomed. Uh, just uh, want to give you a quick overview of what's coming up uh, tonight uh, or this week. Tomorrow, of course, is the newsletter. If you've never subscribed to it, we have a, a newsletter that we send out to about 80,000 people now every week with inside information and tips and news and links and stories. And it'll be in your e-box free every Monday morning. And when you sign up for our newsletter, you get um, immediately a bunch of uh, discounts on all sorts of RV-related services and products and, and inside info. So you can sign up for that really simple. I think I have a link for it someplace here, uh, right there. Just go right there and you can sign up for our uh, RV lifestyle. We'd love to have you be a part of that. And now i got to be positive about this cold. Two weeks, you should be all better. Ten days to two weeks, you're all better. Yeah, I, I think And how it. fortunate you are that it doesn't last forever. Yeah, so uh, so that's coming up, if you can. Uh, also, on Wednesday is our podcast, and this will be episode 267 this coming Wednesday, and we talk about Boondockers Welcome and why that is such a great bargain for RVers and how it will make you stay, always give you a really interesting place to stay. On Thursday, it is our uh, blog uh, or our, our, our video of the week here on YouTube. And we've, we've had a lot of fun. The last two weeks, we've been shooting videos in small southern towns. Um, what's in Don't a name? Don't give away the names. Okay. We've kind of picked is some I fun know? sounds and, and uh, taken Sounds. the names of them and gotten a little bit of the story. And it's just been fun. And uh, we take you with us. You get to tour some of these little towns and learn a little bit about them. And it's it's great. So that's, that's coming. I think it's great. That's the Hope charm. you like it too. The charm. Yep, that'll be Thursday. Of travel. And uh, don't forget on the RV Lifestyle blog, we've got fresh content every single day. New content up every day. Thank you guys so much for bearing with us and the bad voice and the cold. I hope we answered most of your most important questions. Before you go, give us a thumbs up if you haven't. And 
tell them to subscribe. Please, please. <laughs> it really means a lot. Help us to get to that that number. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And, and tell your other RV or friends to subscribe too. All right. Stay healthy, everybody. You're great, fellow travelers. We love having you with us. And uh, we'll see you a week from tonight on another episode of uh, Ask Us Anything. Bye-bye. Happy trails.